Let's yeah. talk about Bikini, because as he's talking about what is truth, what is reality, and that is even more important with a character as dynamic as Bikini, who describes herself as a carpenter like Jesus with tits. tits. Yeah. How else would you describe her? Um, Bikini is childlike. Bikini is um, incredibly tough and dangerously fragile. Um, Bikini is hopeful. Bikini is incredibly hopeless. She's literally um, the extreme of many words. Um, she's excitable. She's also, parts of her are, are dead, maybe. you know. So she, but I think the, the biggest thing about Bikini for me was, I, when I read the script, there were certain lines that she would say that I could see where you know someone might just say, oh, she's, she's crazy, she's nuts. So like, just play her like, she's nuts, you know? But to me, the challenge was, no, that might not make sense to me. That response might not make sense to me because I am not living in her reality. But what makes it more interesting to me and what was more respectful approach, approach for me was, what is it like to live in the shoes of someone where that does make sense? And it doesn't make sense to anybody else. So to me, every single line that she says, I had to find, well, what is she, why did she say that at that moment? Nobody else will know because it, 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 technically to our brains, that's not an appropriate answer. But it's always coming from something that's real for her. But she doesn't have the language to explain everything the way that we all do. She doesn't have the same faculties. So how frustrating must that be if you speak a language and you live in a world where nobody speaks that language? And that's what a lot of people uh, go through, you know, for many different reasons, whether it's mental illness, whatever it is, there are many people that speak a language that nobody else speaks and they're fighting every single day to get through their lives. And, and we did a lot of research. Um, it was based on, on, on research on what it feels like to uh, to have symptoms of, of bipolar disorder, PTSD, um, sexual abuse, uh, someone who is homeless, who's fighting for custody of her daughter, whom we're not sure uh, whether she exists, et cetera. So it was, it was all mapped out and then uh, brought to the screen. It sounds like you, t you took a lot of responsibility in making sure you weren't playing this caricature of what yes. mental illness looked like. That was my, big, that was my biggest intention when I took this on, is that I'm going to do this as respectfully as I possibly can. Uh, because I personally do not suffer from that illness, and so I didn't want to make a mockery of it. And I didn't want to, um, yeah, as you said, I didn't want to make a caricature. I wanted to, to really respectfully dive in and... and, and respect the fact that I don't have that experience and respect the fact that I'm the one telling the story. So I, it, it, takes, it took respect to do that. And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of work to get into that mindset. Uh, was it difficult to leave that on set sometimes when you go home or how quickly can uh. you go? Cause it's, she is so dynamic and there's so much going on. And I can imagine some of those scenes you had to play and then you had to <laughs> go home and meet your friends for dinner. Like how do you? So my, you know? uh, I was uh, I was dating someone at the time, and uh, I would say that I left it on the set very easily. I don't know how he I don't know how he would uh, think I don't know what he'd think about that. He might have something else to say, but I'm not with him anymore, so he doesn't get to say anything about it today. Um, <laughs> no, it was on the table when you left. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, actually, it it um, there were some scenes in particular that really shook me to the core uh, that I wasn't expecting um, because I, I had created a space where I like had my own rituals as to how to walk into this character and how to leave it, you know, and how to always create a boundary because it was a really was a, quite a rabbit hole for me to go on. And uh, so I, um, I would actively step out of this. Like it wasn't, it, there were certain things that I would do like, okay, and now we're done for the day. <laughs> leaving this outside and you know like I said no, I don't know what he had to say about that but <laughs> who cares <laughs> I'm sure it's great um so one thing I loved and you sort of touched on this already was the reality part of it and we have so many so much reality television now and documentaries and there's always that fine line between exploitation mm -hmm. and storytelling and that's something that is very much examined in this film why was that important for you to, to talk about um because I, I always question what we do um, as, as filmmakers, we, uh, we manipulate things. That's our job. The question is, are you manipulating um, in service of a bigger truth? Uh, 
or are you manipulating just to make a film that's you know going to get you to the red carpet and 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 get you a big fat check um so it's it's that manipulation and it's the morality of the media that that i was i was interested in um, and the manipulation in, in how we treat it. So in, in this film, you have a group of filmmakers who are um, actually not that scrupulous about how they treat their subject, and they enter her world, and she's very fragile. So they both get screwed over that. They also sort of insert themselves into the documentary which is problematic, and you, there's questions of ethics there too. Of course, I mean, it, 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 it starts with them wanting to make a cinema verite mm -hmm. type of documentary, direct cinema, where um, the, the director in the film tries to explain uh, pompously that uh, you know, he's breaking the illusion, um, he doesn't mind if you see the microphone, if you see the camera, if you see the process while it's being being, uh, constructed while well, the film is being constructed, all of that is fine. But then, um, at the same time, uh, he manipulates the truth for the sake of his film. Um, and I mean, we're all filmmakers today. It's like we we all carry cameras, we all make little films, we all post what we shoot. There's just so much documentary footage floating around. Uh, but that doesn't mean we know more about the. The, the actual truth about, about what is going on. There's just more data, but that doesn't mean we know more. Interesting. The thing I loved about Bikini is that the moment you want to kind of make her a victim, you realize she's playing her own game yep. and she's also yeah. manipulating them. And so I spent a lot of the movie not really realizing or knowing who was in control. How fun was that to play that kind of dynamic? I mean, we really, really worked on it, you know, and even with um, our my beloved castmates who were phenomenal, like from day one, I'm so glad we had, thank you for putting that cast together because we really, really were so dedicated to finding the balance in, in every single scene. Like, okay, so what what is this? And we so we, we were able to play, and but but it was fun because that is that is a big part of this film where she's, it, it's like you, you think she's unaware of certain things, but then you realize, oh, no, she's actually quite perceptive. And she actually is aware that, that they are taking advantage of her. And so she kind of finds her way to turn that around. Nothing is as it seems. Yeah. That's, I guess that's the message of the film. Yeah. yeah. And so even some of, the, some of the things that she gives them, some of the, the little crumbs she gives them, you don't really know whether that's true or not. She might have just done that because she needed something out of it. And she realized it. I, th I don't want to give anything away, but, but there was like, there's like some... I forget, there's like some part in the film where Trevor, Trevor is the, the lead documentarian, he asks her a question about something, and the way that she responds is like, is that what you want me to say? Is that what you want me to say? Because I can say it if that's what you'd like. That's what you want, right? You know? So also it's deflecting and making them be vulnerable. Like, she's <laughs> yeah. controlling their... I was yeah. like, damn. But then it, it's it's really relatable because you have people like that in your life who you can see them navigating situations and sort of playing both sides. And so mm -hmm. she was this really fun character to watch. Mm -hmm.